from doing your pleasure on my holy day. Notice again how he's calling it his holy day. And call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. And so there is great promise in surrendering and keeping God's Sabbath. Luke 9.23, very similar to coming to Jesus. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. He says in Matthew 11.28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And so not only will Jesus give us spiritual rest as we rest from ever trying to earn our salvation by our works, but he also wants to give us physical rest too in that special day, the Sabbath day. And so wrapped up in that gift, that wonderful gift that God has given, we find spiritual and physical rest in that day. The next question that comes in is, can God's law be changed? And the answer is obviously not. Matthew 5:19, Jesus said, Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least of these commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great, in the kingdom of heaven. And so, as we've looked at a little bit earlier, we cannot destroy God's law. We can't take it away. It will destroy us. Deuteronomy 4.2, Do not add to what I command you, and do not subtract from it, but keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. Luke 16.17 is another reference that, that not one jot or tittle will, will fall away from the law ever. The law of the Lord is perfect, Psalm 19.7. My question would be, why change a perfect thing? If the law was perfect when God gave it, why would He ever uh, change that? Proverbs 16.25, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. We may rationalize in our minds that it doesn't matter what day we keep holy or what day we recognize as the Sabbath, but the Bible's clear that our hearts are deceitful and that God has specifically laid out which day is the Sabbath day. Isaiah 8.20, one of the tests of whether someone who is teaching or, or uh, being a prophet is a true prophet or teacher of God, it says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. 1 John 2.4, he who says I know him, being Christ, and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. 1 John 5, 3, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. And again, we found in Revelation 12, 17, that the dragon is angry with the remnant who keep the commandments of God. This brings us to the biggest question of all, and that is, who did change the Sabbath? In previous nights, we've studied the beast, and we've looked in Daniel and Revelation to find out who that beast was, and several times... During those studies, I told you to keep a few things, a few of those points in mind. And I said later on, as we studied more and more into the beast, that they would become more and more relevant. One of those things, you'll remember, that it said about the beast in Daniel chapter 7, was that it would think to change God's times and laws. We know the Sabbath is both a time and a law. And of course, it's part of God's law. And so one of the things that we're going to find as we study this even further is that the beast, power, is actually the one to blame for this change in God's Sabbath. But as we've looked biblically, we know that, number one, God did not change the Sabbath day. For John 14, 6 tells us, Jesus is speaking, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Whereas on the other hand, in John 8, 44, Jesus tells us very clearly that Satan is a liar and the father of it. He's been lying since the very beginning. He's a murderer, a liar, and we need to watch very carefully his system of lies and deceit, especially as it is revealed in Revelation as this beast power that it tells us that all the world will wonder after that beast. So we know that God did not change the Sabbath day. Malachi 3, 6 tells us, For I am the Lord, and I do not change. And it should give you great peace to know that the God that you serve 
does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We know that as we look through our study that Jesus didn't change the Sabbath. We found that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13.8 We know that the disciples didn't change the Sabbath. As we studied through and looked and saw that Paul kept the Sabbath, uh, some 84 times, we said, in the book of Acts alone. Acts chapter 5 and verse 29, But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. So who did it? Who did change the Sabbath? Daniel 7.25, again, I told you that the beast power would think to change times and laws. And of course, the Sabbath day is both a time and a law. And so we don't have quite the amount of time that we need to go even deeper into this subject tonight. But in part two of this message about the greatest deception affecting you, we're going to discuss not only how this day changed, the history of the change, but also some of those troubling texts that maybe some of you even have in your mind, such as Colossians chapter 2 and verses 13 through 15. There's some in Romans and Galatians as well that seem to indicate that maybe the Sabbath isn't as important as we've studied tonight. But we're going to take the time to answer those questions in detail. And I pray that you'll call the number that's on the screen and I can get you a free copy of this program and the program to come. And so please stay tuned as we will have a part two of this message entitled The Greatest Deception Affecting You. This is volunteer-supported York Community Access Television, cable channel 16.